everybody. Welcome back. We are on episode eight, baby. Episode, episode eight, eight of the Oom. Um, yeah. And Sean, what are we talking about today? Stepdaddy. <laughs> the funny <laughs> thing about that is everywhere we go in town or like when we're out with the kids, he always tells everybody, yeah, they call me stepdaddy. They call and there me are stepdaddy. adults. They're, 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 they're not young kids. They're 21 and 23. Give stepdaddy a hug. <laughs> they <laughs> love it. No, <laughs> they, they love it. well, I mean, they're used to it at this point. They just laugh. But um, so we're going to talk all about co-parenting with our my ex and yeah. um, you joining we're the We're going to tell you how to do it right and wrong. <laughs> Actually, I feel like there's no right or wrong. <laughs> You're answer. doing it wrong. There's I, I honestly feel like there's no right and wrong answer. No, the answer this is, is how you, we did it. Right? You have to find what works for your family and how your family grooves and what what brings happiness to the household. I yeah. mean, that's the key because you can turn co-parenting and step-parenting can be a, a miserable thing if you don't do teamwork. Oh, for sure. Teamwork yeah. And th like this is how we do it. Obviously, and everybody's got their own magic and their own way they want their kids to be raised. So we're just speaking to our experience. Absolutely. We have no specialty behind this, no education. <laughs> this is real life for us. All right, so we're going to start off with some questions that, well, first, what age was it that you came into the kid's life? I think it was five, five and seven. And seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we had one going into second grade and one going no, into when kindergarten. No, when we were dating, Hayden was in kindergarten, Hunter was in second. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So we actually started dating just before school started. We started Basically, dating, yeah. yeah. Right before school started that season. Yeah. And so we met on a, no, we did not meet in a strip club, for those of you that listened to the... <laughs> The Q&A, Sean, did people actually believe that we really met in a strip club? So if anybody's watching this episode of The Oom, uh, we get asked, how did we meet quite often? <laughs> and so on Instagram, I generally come up with a different answer every time. And so the last time it was you feeling, <laughs> feeling put off from your divorce while your girlfriends took you to a strip club and I was on stage dancing. Me and you went into a private room. <laughs> and that's how we met. That is false. No. We just get asked that a lot, so I'd make <laughs> stuff up. So we actually met playing soccer, and on the sideline, the kids were fighting because that's what my kids would do. And I was like, nope, the rule is you cannot call for me, talk to me, unless something's really wrong. And they were screaming, Mom! and he still fell for me. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. The kids didn't bother me. But it was basically one line over and over that I remember. Mom, Hunter hit me. <laughs> oh, my God. Shut up. Mom's playing. It's soccer time for mom. <laughs> yeah, I might not win. Well, mom and, of the year. and we'll get to it. But that actually a part of that, not that you yelling at your kids, but a part of that um, helped me be part of your life. So we'll get there. We will get there. All right. So that was a question already. Um, do you do the boys see their dad? I never see anything on Hunter's post. Leash on. All right, so here's a, the thing about that. Their dad was... And, and real quick, we don't have to post about that guy. You know what we I mean? Like they, no, that, that's, that's, this is our life. You're never well, going to see him in a, on, on They don't post. see anything on Hunter's. Oh, I thought they were talking about your uh -uh. post. They like, don't see anything listen, on... Listen, you're not going to post about your ex. <laughs> <laughs> but they said on Hunter, which is my our son, uh, they only see them him post about you. They've never seen him post about his dad. And oh, okay. the answer is their dad was... In their life, as minimal as he possibly could make it, he did exactly what the court ordered. He had four days a month that he saw them, and he saw them pretty much on those four days a month until he gave them the option, and they never went back. And are they close? They are not close. Hayden and Hayden and their dad, especially not close. Hunter, Hunter is a people pleaser. He doesn't like to hurt people, and so he's a little more willing but to they're, do. They're fine. They're fine. Yes. Yeah. Hunter will do little things with him. I, I don't Hayden, think I don't think Hunter does it to please him. No, he's I, just but their Hunter's relationship a good person is fine. too. Yeah. Hunter's a good person. Not that Hayden's a bad person, but Hayden is more strong minded like me. He's like, uh, no. And if it doesn't make him happy, he's probably not going to do it. And Hunter's just not that way. So Hayden doesn't see him very much. Hunter sees him a little more frequently. I basically see say Christmas and Thanksgiving for Hayden's about it. And hunters a couple times a year, but so that's the relationship. Go. Um, so most of their fatherhood figure they had in their life was Sean. Uh, they they looked up to him for dad. Actually, this is something 
So we, like early on, I mean, we, okay. So this is kind of <laughs> like, when did, a question was, when did, when did you start, did, when did we introduce you into their life? Oh, I was there from literally moment negative one. So the second we met. I mean, they were always they were with already, you. So yeah. we basically, while we were dating for a long time, we were friends. It was not dating. It was just friends. Well, we'd meet at the soccer park. Like we didn't meet outside of that. I'd see you when we played soccer and your kids were with you and you know, you were a strong soccer player. We had fun playing soccer and that was about it. And, and yeah, and your kids were always there. So we always, I was around them and I like messing with kids, right? It didn't matter whose kids they were. Sean is really good with kids. Sean is way better with kids than I am with kids. I mean, I was really good with my kids. (laughs) You were great with your kids. But But Sean is a, a kid person. Kids flock to him. He's a kid magnet. He's super engaging with them, super playful. And so they just took to him right away and it was just friends. And so I think that that was a big difference. So it wasn't like an automatic introduction. He's moving in or anything like that. And being good to somebody else's kids is super easy because you play with them. You have a lot of fun with them and then you just leave them. Like when you get them all hyper and and you're messing with them and then you're like, see you going home. Don't have to deal with you. (laughs) But you're always a favor around any kids for sure. So it wasn't a, this is when we introduced because from day one, the kids have been around Sean from the day, the day Sean and I became friends. Well, I couldn't be around. I couldn't be around you without being around. I always had my kids. I'm not going to be around you and be a jerk to the people you love. Yeah. So right away, the kids were introduced not right away. Later (laughs) on, we say that he saved his jerk side for later on. Um, (laughs) What hurdles, if you, if any, did you face when you started correcting the boys, like disciplining boys, the boys? Um, I think the hurdle was making sure that me and you were on the same page. And, and once we were on the same page, I didn't have a problem with that. Like if something needs to be done, I do it. It's not, I, I, I made it, I made it a priority to never be the guy who says, Oh, wait till your mom gets home. Um, I, we already were on the same page. And so that if I knew that we were already on the same page and they were doing something against that, I would take care of it. It wasn't ever like your, if I say it in my mind, if I always said, oh, I'm going to tell your mom, wait till your mom gets home. She's, you're going to get in trouble. Then she was the only one they respected. And so I made sure to say things like to take care of things before she got home. And then we did discuss what happened. And then she would be on my side and she would say the exact same thing. And if we ever ran into troubles about, I didn't know what we thought I would do my best to, to stop the behavior, I guess, and then not really punish. And then we would talk about it later and come up with a punishment. I mean, punishment is just a general word. I would say that number, first of all, is we had great communication as parents when they were younger, we communicated so much, stayed on the same page. Was it always easy? No, Uh, for the most part, it was easy. Yeah. Well, I took good cues from you. I also, I didn't, I didn't jump in immediately trying to be change trying to like, yeah, either. to try and change things or create my rule. I took cues from you and I saw what priorities you had as far as a parent went. And I took those cues and used them. So it wasn't anything like the kids hadn't seen before. It's like, if you lied, your mom would be really upset. And so get would I bad like, juice. yeah, you'd get bad <laughs> juice. But tell them about bad juice. That was funny. Oh, bad juice. Bad, bad juice? juice is a freaking genius idea. So anything they did with their mouth, whether it was lying, talking back, whatever it might be, if it was mouth related, they got a mouth like mouthful of bad juice. Bad and juice, so yeah. bad juice was just vinegar. I would put like a medicine dropper a syringe of vinegar and just squirt yeah, it in there. Like, no, I didn't, mom. Mm. And if we found that it was a lie, then they got bad juice and it was a it was a spoonful of vinegar. Well, it was a, I used a medicine dropper. Remember? Medicine dropper. And they always sat on and, the same spot on the kitchen counter. For their bad juice spot. And they had to drink <laughs> vinegar. And it was like just a squirt of it, but yeah, it, was it wasn't that, chugging it was... vinegar, but they hated it. And one day <laughs> we're like, let's make sure, let's try, let's give each other bad juice. We sat each other literally <laughs> on the counter. And we gave each other the bad juice. And it's like, oh, like salad dressing. It's not that, that bad. No, it, it wasn't <laughs> But bad. for them, it was Oh, it was the worst terrible. thing ever. Yeah. No, not bad juice. But um, so we did. Yeah. So I would see this. And the kids are horrible human beings. So I would see them get in trouble all the time, <laughs> take cues from you. And then I could do the same things Here's- to them. Right. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have to come up with my own sort of parenting. It was an easy 
process. And we integrated him like early on. The kids said, hey, can we call it? We, well, no, Hayden, I think, wanted to start calling you dad like right away. Ooh, yeah, that was really quick. Within weeks. And that I was, was like, absolutely quick. not. Yeah. You know, Sean is. Yeah, Sean, if the kids have- are listening, it'd be nice now. They don't have to. But, we, but early on, it was it was really early, and it was very sweet. And I, I really and I like I understood that was really cool and sweet. But we needed a separation, and what you came up with a line about. I just said, look, you have one dad. So your dad is your dad, and then Sean is your second dad. Yeah. And that was kind of like so the way Sean it stayed. Yeah. So it never changed. It never. It is not stepdaddy. Like he likes to think it's stepdaddy. We do not call him the big stepdaddy in our house. I should. (laughs) Oh, John, tell us what, uh, tell us a little bit about your shirt you got on here. Oh yeah. I wore this shirt specifically for this podcast. It was my first ever uh, Father's Day gift from the boys. And I wear it every Father's Day. And so I wore it today. It's about to be retired. Look at the size hole. I got (laughs) giant holes in this thing. There's holes all over the place. It smells and for whatever <laughs> it reason. Smell. It's like old moldy cotton. I have no idea. I think it was like a $10 shirt from Walmart. No, and it was from it. Target. I love it. But the boys picked it out years and years and years yeah. ago. So every birthday, Christmas, Easter, and all the holidays. the hardest time naming every. I don't even know who this guy is. Who's that okay, guy? Okay, that's good. We get it. We no, get it. you know how many times I've looked at this? I don't know any. I don't know all these guys. Most of them. All right. So every holiday, we would take. Take, I would take the boy shopping to pick out gifts for him, put under the tree or for his birthday. And then he would do vice versa for myself. And so we always made it like everybody's equal. Everyone's special. This is all a big part of the family. And one day I took the boys to get him <laughs> a birthday present. It was a, yeah, his birthday. Oh my goodness. And I, and I said, don't tell Sean when we go inside. Don't tell Sean. We walk in the door and what happens? So I'm in the bedroom. I have no idea what what I'm doing, but whatever. So they get home from shopping. Hayden rushes to find me. I just told them not to say anything. Hey, you want to know what we got you for your birthday? I'm like, Hayden, that's awesome. No, thank you very much. Let it be a surprise. It starts with a B. Don't tell me we're good. It's a bike. (laughs) It took (laughs) 10 seconds total. (laughs) 10 seconds total. (laughs) No, I'm good. B. No, I'm good. It's a bike. And there was a surprise. Uh, I don't even think anybody else got into the bedroom at that point. How how fast he was excited to tell me. But I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate that that happens to a lot of you. You just have to laugh at it. Whatever. All right. So here's a question that we got from M-A-R-A-W-L-25. I don't know how you pronounce that. Mara. Mara W-L. Sure. All right. Have the boys ever gotten angry with him and said this isn't their dad? This wasn't their dad. Now, they have gotten angry with me. Absolutely. Like, just like they yeah. would get angry with They've me. They've been annoyed at me, angry with me, um, embarrassed at me, all the emotions, but not once, surprisingly, to answer the question right away. But we were prepared. We talked about it. there's going to be a day where they say, well, you're not even my dad. You can't say that. And never once did that come out of their mouth. Surprising. But you know what? Sean was a classroom mom. Actually, I was a classroom mom, but I worked a ton. And so Sean was in their classroom. Yeah, I was, on, I was on daily. call. I was still a pilot this time. And so I was on call most days. Um, I wasn't always flying, but I was always prepared to fly, I guess. So I ended up with a lot of room in the middle of the day. And I could go in for an hour or two into so the classroom. So he read to the classroom. Pretty much all, yeah, all the way through elementary. I was the classroom helper at least a little bit. I mean, I was, I was a classroom mom, but I was working most of the time. And so he would take care of that. He was the one that took them to all their doctor's appointments with their younger dentist, all that stuff, because yeah. I was working. So we definitely team worked everything. It was just as if. You were their dad? Like yeah. It, I mean, I it? took him to all their uh, doctor's appointments. You literally stopped going to their doctor's appointments. Yeah. And not because she would... Lo- <laughs> not because I was sitting at no, home. No, she was working in the I middle of the day. Working. I wasn't. I took him. Yes. Uh, but, uh, oh, real quick, for that line about, hey, you're not my father, I had prepared for this. I had a line. I was ready to go. Okay. If they oh, ever my say God. This, this is terrible. <laughs> they ever say this. Yeah, you're not my dad. I'd be like, yeah, well, I f your mom. Yeah, I was gonna get him good. I was gonna real good. He's yeah. so dumb. I'm sorry, guys. You no, have to no, listen no. to him. No, no, no. Yeah, well, I give it to your mom every night. How about that? And that's also in this fantasy world. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. They don't know that. How accepting were the boys in the beginning, and are they still? Well, we kind of went over that one already. Um, dude, we ever want kids of our own? Yeah. Well, no. 
<laughs> I was mediocre, okay, but yeah. if it happened, it happened. I but wasn't. None. I wasn't gung ho about having my own kids. I, I was worried about regretting not having my own kids because I. It's hard to like have a conversation one day and say, "Do you want kids?" I mean, I knew what a big responsibility was. I was helping take care of your kids, and it was a lot of work. And so it wasn't a surprise at what having a kid would be like, but it's like, all right, do you want a kid from day one? I skipped the whole diaper phase, which was amazing. Um, amazing. And I was, I was worried I was going to regret not trying. I was going to regret not even thinking about having my own kid. And so we did try. Um, nine months. Nine months. We, we gave it, we said nine months, we're going to try. If it happens naturally, it's meant to be. If it's not, if yeah. it doesn't happen, it's not meant to so be. So we didn't try fertility drugs. We didn't try like um, timing it. Uh, with your your no. period every month or whatever your cycle, uh, we just pulled the goalie for nine months <laughs> and nothing happened, and then we stopped trying. And and, and I, I feel like that's I appreciate God's plan. that because you didn't you weren't gung ho about kids, um, and you still had you gave me nine months to try. You were probably secretly taking birth control, is my <laughs> was, guess I at was, this point. <laughs> I was never on birth control because I know the the Oprea line has strong genes for getting ki- girls pregnant. And uh, you didn't get he pregnant, so I think you world. sabotaged it. Is my my is strong. It strong. must not be because I was able to get pregnant, and nah, not with know. you. <laughs> Maybe my shit doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How long after divorce before we met and introduced the kids? So the, again, the kids were introduced from day one. Yeah, do you know that timeline better than I do? A year, one yeah, year. That's right. And I said, when we started dating, I said, I don't ever want to have a boyfriend. I don't want to ever get married. And then a year later, well, after we met, we were married. Yeah. Well, you were, I thought the timeline went, you hardcore separated, the divorce started. It finalized like a month oh, before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I count the divorce from the day we separated because yeah. there was, I filed there was, for- He yeah. never lived there again. Yeah. You guys never, yeah. He we moved separated in with his girlfriend and, and the and, next day I filed for divorce. There was no, let's yeah. see what's going to happen. It, it finalized a year later. Yeah. So, so you were basically a single woman for a year, sort of. Yeah. And then a month after that finalized, we were dating, but yeah. unplanned. Actually, when we were no. on the soccer field, I was like, oh, no, he's too young. Uh-uh, uh-uh, yeah. uh-uh, too she, young. Uh, she would be dating out of his league, out of her league. You know what I mean? Like, you're going up to this level. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she's like, oh, sh- he's such he a good like looking a guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I married him. And everyone still thinks, wait, wait, wait. We went out. This is the first time we went out with our neighbors the other day off subject. But we went to um, the top, the one hotel rooftop. Our neighbors are in their mid-20s. One's actually 30, I think. And they asked if that, if they were our son and daughter. <laughs> and I was like, well, Sean, join my club. Do, usually yeah. you get asked. No, if, usually if I'm your, your son. Yep. Yeah. Our neighbors are now our kids. Neighbors are now our kids. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, all right. That was the last on the questions that I got. But um, what, what else are you going to talk about with the kids? There's so much. I mean, there's so much parenting. So the parenting that we have going now, I feel like. It's different because they're adult kids, but we yeah. all still have a really strong relationship. And Hayden's in a weird spot, but Hayden's just in a weird spot emotionally. It has nothing to do with us. But um, Sean and Hayden, Sean and Hunter work out every day. They go to Titans games. Like they, we all go I, out I, together. I so think I for like- me, as far as still being a step parent when they're 21, 23, early 20s, is balancing the idea of wanting to be friends with an adult. You know what I mean? Having, you know, a lot in common with them and want to be their friends, but also being a parent. So it's not like I'm all buddy, buddy and, and like everything goes, but I'm still their parent, right? I'm still, I'm I'm not trying to be their biggest buddy. Hunter's kind of at the point where we don't have to parent much. No, not too much. There's a little bit there and we, we we talk a little bit about his future and we'll talk about finances a little bit. We still guide a little bit, but we don't really have to parent anymore. Hayden? Yeah, we yeah, like when Hunter and I started working out together, we we've gotten a little bit closer. He probably wouldn't say that. I think he, whether or not he likes his time with me in his gym, I don't know. We'll see. I think it's great for both of you guys. <laughs> Hayden and I still have some growing to do. He has some growing up to do. And, Hayden, uh, Hayden we'll Hayden's going to get better. Actually, we're on a really good couple weeks streak. So actually, I'm really proud of him right now. So um, it's it's been a little rough road. I talked about that in a couple episodes ago, but it's getting better, and I, it's actually fun to watch. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's about. So for me coming into a relationship with a fully fledged tight family, cause I mean, they're mama's boys. 
Oh, for shit. sure. We're insanely close. Um, the thing that always made me feel welcome is that there was space for me. So whether or not Aaron did that on purpose, whether that it's her national per- natural personality, I don't know. But even when back when I first met her, when the kids were yelling uh, about them getting in, you know, fighting on the sidelines of soccer and Aaron yelling at them, leave me alone, I'm playing. Um, it's not like that was a specific invitation, but there were was delineation. I'm here to be your parent, but there are times when you need to be on your own and then I am doing my thing. And so there's space there. When If she's giving herself time to do her own thing, then it's not always about the kids. It's not always about everything in my life is associated with them. So there was space for me to be involved in that family that wasn't me taking time away from the kids and their mom, uh, the mom and the kids or whatever. And, and um, from day one, I felt that there was space and, and that from, was important. And from day one, these boys were obsessed with you. Yeah. They, I mean, crazily well, obsessed. Well, you guys know how great I am. I have to keep telling you that. You forget. Yeah, you do have to tell me daily. Yeah. You should remind me every single day. Every single day, I need to remind you. But like he would do things. Well, we would do them together, but we would. We decided we were going to learn a choreography dance to this song by Jason Derulo called Talk Dirty to Me. You can actually search this if you want to it's search not, online. It's on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> um, but we learned this dance by this professional dancer. And I was like, I want to perform at a talent show. And so we tried to get into the kids' talent show. Shout we out couldn't. to Patrick. And we could not get it. We into did the want talent. to go to their school and do it at their school. Yeah, talent show. But we couldn't do it. So we, um, since we couldn't do that, we we took speakers to, you know, big soccer tournaments. And there's tons and tons and tons of people there. We decided in the middle of Brentwood in Nashville that we were going to, <laughs> Jack wants to sit on Hayden's, or Sean's lap. Um, we were going to perform. He's about to throw up on me. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> no, he is. <laughs> he is already throwing up on me. <laughs> oh. <Holy> cow. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that, that's what it's like having kids, by the way. That Suddenly they just throw up on you. Well, we're gonna keep going. So we decided that we were going to <laughs> perform in the middle of their soccer game. <laughs> And we, so and we, so we did it. We, and the <laughs> kids were mortified, but we had so much fun. And then we did it again at one of their soccer parties. All right, All right guys. All right, wait, wait. We'll come back in a second after I <laughs> clean up my kids' puke. <laughs> it's okay. Be back you in a moment. Well, and we're back. <laughs> we had well, a little technical <laughs> difficulty. If this I'm a stepfather to this dog too, so you know <laughs> no. it fits with the. We got a little. I forgot. I didn't get that bit of puke from uh, good old sick Jack. Well, that is a. This is a perfect episode for that to happen. <laughs> talking about kids and raising oh kids and uh, <laughs> throws up in his lap. That was. I tell you what. Thing. As any father or stepfather, you always have to be careful of your nut region. They will come after you, dogs. A Apparently, too, it was about to yak literally right <laughs> on my lap. I don't. He loves you more, and he chose me to yak on. Oh my god! Praise the Lord! <laughs> I trained him well. <laughs> but uh, but honestly, raising kids, I I, th- I found myself lucky being a stepdad, uh, and that like the only father experience I had. I got to skip the diaper phase, but I did not skip the poop pee puke phase because that just goes on forever. Forever. I'm still cleaning your pee-filled uh, clothes. Oh, but not for long because I'm getting that fixed As on another October episode, 10th. But stick around for another episode for Aaron's fix to possibly her pee problem when she works out. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but yeah, I never had a problem jumping into the mix, cleaning up puke and pee and poop. Uh, the boys took to it. They were very comfortable. Thank goodness you made it a very open household. Uh, uh, Oprah is open mic. Oprah's open house. We had conversations about everything. 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 I became the go-to guy about uh, uh, private parts, uh, male private you parts. You know, this is actually really cool. Like, Mom, what is this? And then he, he, I'd get called over. Sean, <laughs> come look. I'm looking at this. I don't know what this is. <laughs> but you know what's one thing that you did that was actually really cool and really special for the kids um, when they turned 16 they got all the man stuff yeah i had a, i i wanted to do this thing called man day and i created a whole day where it was just me and one of the kids and i my the idea was that 
we would do all the things in one day. Actually, I think they were 15 when they got their permit. Yeah, it was meant to be before they turned 16. So it was meant to be like right there around puberty. It was meant to be talking about sex. It was meant to be talking about driving, about shaving, about uh, tipping at restaurants, about uh, managing money. Um, So the idea is like I would give them at the beginning of the day, I would give them a large sum of money. I don't know, 200 bucks, whatever. And they had to manage it throughout the day. We'd go out to breakfast, go out to lunch, go out to dinner. In between that, we would go shopping. We would go to the bank. We opened up a checking account for them. Uh, we went to Walmart and got shaving equipment. We got condoms. We got bananas for the condoms. Say, bananas. Uh, and, uh, and so we had a full day. It was like they get to pick where we went to eat. Uh, when the bill came, they had to pay it with the money I'd given them. They had to figure out the tip. After that, we would go to a church parking lot in the middle of the week. It was really easy. Nobody was there. And they were 15. And so they were just about to start driving. So we would change spots and I would try and teach them how to drive and park. And then we would stop and we'd get out the condoms and we'd talk about sex and we would put condoms on bananas. (laughs) Uh, And then uh, we'd go do something fun, like maybe soccer related or Dave and Buster's. It was supposed to be about things that are fun. Um, We would end up at home. And we would um, um, talk about how to shave uh, your face, going over, sh- uh, you know, shaving cream and straight razors, and also about maintaining just general hygiene. We we talk about trimming down pubes on your balls uh, because you want to. I don't know. For me, it always helped with smell. It always helped with cleanliness. Ball it, smell it, ball is smell a is smell. Real bad. That you, I mean, it any is, parent knows that no, you end up with you end know. up with boys. Any parent knows that no, you end no, up with no. boys. Well, your their balls smell so. Your parents must not have taught you because taught me. What do you mean well, taught me? Well, we would get in the car after playing a soccer game. Your balls smell like I was like, uh-uh, I can't. Your balls smell yeah, so bad. Well, then I would take a shower. It was right after a sports event. What but do you want I from me? wanted to. Oh, yeah, I will take bo any day over the smell of sweaty balls. Sweaty it balls is, is real bad. It's really gaggable. But the ball spray is. Is yeah, well, I didn't teach, teach the boys ball spray. Well, you have now. I have now. But. Yeah, every boy <laughs> needs to know about ball spray. Yeah, and so we'd have we'd have a man day, and and uh, with both boys, they were exhausted. They were done doing stuff because it, it was meant to be get up early, do 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 do, and uh, and have a full day of doing stuff and teaching and learning and tipping and blah 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 and all this stuff. And it was supposed to be a big deal about it, and um, so I, I was I was really happy with that, and uh, and it, and it worked. And I'm not saying, and that was an awesome day, but I'm not saying that parenting, step parenting was always easy. It wasn't no. always easy. Every, parenting is not easy. <laughs> yeah. It has its challenges. It has nothing challenges. to do with step parenting. Yeah. yeah, for, Sean was basically, there was no, you're a step parent, you're this. The kids didn't think of it that way. The kids have always looked at you as dad. They've always gone to you for anything. Like, hey, I need this sign for school or I yeah, need... they, with no kids know who to go to. Well, they know who to go to for what. <laughs> Mom's going to allow this and Sean's going to allow this. But they always went to you. If they needed tech help, they knew not to come to me because I can't even turn on a computer. Well, but I mean, they like they needed something filled out. They went to Sean. Oh, I filled out all forms. <laughs> I did all, all doctor's appointments. I uh, did all. Yeah. So we're not and, like, we, I'm we not... Went, uh, both of us usually went for the shots. Yeah. Although I tried to convince them that as they grew older, normal shots didn't work and they had to take the shots in their eyeballs. Uh, at that point, they didn't believe me. I tried to be like, oh, this shot's going in your penis. Uh, so really bear down for this one. They didn't believe me. They stopped believing me. <laughs> Thank on, goodness. On <laughs> Thank goodness. We had little things like, hey, the um, Chuck E. Cheese was only open during rainy that days. That was one of the bad. That was her rule. Yeah. It's like McD- we love when you they want to go Chuck E. Cheese. I want to go Chuck E. Cheese. Well, it's sunny out. They're not open. It's only open on rainy days. That was like a rainy day activity for us. And like the McDonald's playground, that was the same thing. It's only open on rainy days. We only can go on rainy days. <laughs> so we had all these places that this was open when it was sunny. And that, and they believed me until they didn't believe me anymore. <laughs> but... So I, my, my parenting rule is be open and honest with your partner and communicate and, and your and, kids and lie to your kids as much as possible. No, but being open with your kids, open communication, I feel like is the key to parenting. And I feel like it's the key to having a relationship through your teenage years, which yeah. is hard. We got pretty lucky with both of them. They both continue to communicate even through their teenage years. There's a little phase that kind of slows down, but overall, 
people ask me, what did you guys do that caused them to stay open with you? And I would feel like the main answer is communication. And I didn't judge them. I'd be like, I know you're going to do X, Y, Z, but let's just talk about it. Let's talk. Before you decide to make do this, let's talk about it. And I feel like because I didn't judge them for things that maybe I didn't agree with, I would let, give them a chance to listen to our opinion. But it was both ways. It was you sometimes. It was me sometimes talking about everything you could possibly talk about. Yeah. So, like, we had open conversations about very drugs. Very open. Right? Very open conversations about drugs and smoke and this is alcohol. why This is why people do them. This is why you might be enticed to do them. And if you are going to do them, know your drug dealer personally. Don't just get random drugs. <laughs> Make sure they come that. from a reputable source. Absolutely. You know, you should be on a really first-name basis with your drug dealer. Always pay your bills, right? So that this guy's not going to lace your drugs. Oh You're going to get your weed from a, a, a really good farm. You know what I mean? Like an organic weed farm. You got to know your drug dealer. I think this is good parenting advice. Oh, no, that's terrible parenting advice. But oh, now, you, want, you want when you go get drugs, you want to get it from a random guy in the corner? I don't, this is good advice. No, I don't want them to get drugs. But it. I feel like nowadays, that's a scary. We got pretty lucky. The boys did not get into drugs. We didn't go through a drug case. Hayden, Hayden blames this one smell that was in a car early on on a skunk, <laughs> and I refuse to believe him. It and is either a him or his we friends have every day still to this day. Smoked That's, weed in my car. Someone did. And he believes, I, there's no way I believe that was a skunk. And he believed, well, there was no time. It was mm. a skunk and this and that. Mm. But really, neither yeah. one of them. We didn't. We struggled with a lot of things, but uh, drugs wasn't one of them that we had to, thankfully. Correct. But it's a scary time with drugs because everything I feel like is laced from Adderall to Xanax to all of it. But there is at home test for that. So test right. it before you take it. Yeah. Yeah. Or just don't Just take like it. your girlfriends. Test them before you take them. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we're out, baby. We are out. So, so sorry about our not technical legal difficulty. advice parents. <laughs> Sorry for the this is our difficulty. experience. Welcome to the Oprah is open mic. And this open is our household. household. <laughs> Hey, you guys are awesome. Um, leave a comments in below. Like, I want to hear other people's experience with co-parenting or co-parenting, step-parenting. What issues did you guys have? What did you find to be the biggest thing? Yeah. Like, we got pretty lucky we didn't have to co-parent a ton because most of our co-parenting was just us and not with our ex. You see, yeah, it would have been involved. different if, if it was like you as a single mother and then their dad trying, you know. Their dad you know. really had no input or... Part any any part that they, they needed their father for, I was there for. Yeah. So I would like to hear, like, how your guys' experience have been over the years. Um, what were the most challenging things? What did you do to fix them? Put them in the comments because this is how other people can learn from it because we aren't the end-all be-all. We just know what worked for us. <laughs> yeah, we love our kids, but they're both idiots. So... <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> that I'm sure that so your experience with your kids true. are better. <laughs> not true, not true. Hey, but you guys are awesome, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.